Okay, so here's section 3.6, polynomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So the first thing I want to take a look at now is example number one, and I'm just asking you to expand and simplify. This should not be new to you. You should have done this before in grade nine. I'd like you to first of all try to do at least part a using algebra tiles, and then confirm your answer using the distributive properties. So to show algebra tiles, I hope you remember what those things look like. I've got this little program here. You got your x squareds, right? You got your x's, you got your ones. Also have your negative x squared, uh, negative x, and then also the ones, negative ones. Okay, so colors mean positive in this case. The whites mean that they're negative. Let's reset. This one says that I want to do uh, x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. So x minus 1, here's x, right, and minus 1, I guess that'd be one of these negatives. So let's pull that up there. So there's x minus 1, and then we have, what was it, 2x plus 3, so I'm going to pull out 2x's, plus 3, 1, 2, 3, now notice the idea here of expanding is you're trying to create a rectangle. So this is like your length and here's your width or vice versa. So I'll take each of these and I'll rotate it so we get actually two dimensions. There's your 2x and then here's 1, 2, 3. And then to find the actual answer, I'm looking for the stuff in here. Take each of these lengths, multiply each of these widths. Now notice if I take an x times an x, what do I get? An x squared. Here's another x and another x, so here's x squared. I'm going to move this up so we can see the difference. Okay. How about an x times a positive 1? Well, that just becomes positive x. Another positive x. Another positive x. Okay. Now, a positive x times a negative 1 gives us a negative x. And then you rotate that. Similarly, a positive x times a negative 1 gives us another negative x. Rotate. Okay? And then a negative, sorry, a negative and a positive always just become a negative. So I'll need three negatives over here. Okay? And there you have it. So notice what I have here in my picture. 2x squared, 3x negative 2x, and negative 3. So I'd like you to draw this, please, in your notes right now. So once again, we'll do x minus 1, solid green, minus 1. Then we have 2x, once again, solid green, two of them, solid rods, I'll say. Three little squares, all solid as well. And then, what do we get? Well, there was the x squared. Another x squared. I guess these should be shaded. And then you have these x's here that are also shaded. Okay. And then you have the negative x. Another negative x. And then also these negatives down here. So if you think about your picture, I've got two x squareds, I've got a th positive 3x, I've got minus 2x, and a minus 3, and that simplifies to 2x squared plus x minus 3. Now, let me just try and double check this with expanding, you know that foiling stuff? So foil first, x times 2x is 2x squared, x times 3 is 3x, negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x, and negative 1 times positive 3 is minus 3. We'll simplify that, and lo and behold, it's the same thing. Great. So I'd like you to do the next one now. We'll just expand this one. You could try it with your algebra tiles if you have them at home. 2x times 3x is now 6x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. 3 x times 1 is 3x, and then 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. We'll simplify this one as well, and there you go. Nice and easy. 
I'd like to show you the last one for part one now, 2x minus 1 all squared. Now many of you will probably do this. Oh, I'll distribute the square. So I'll take 2x, I'll square that, take the minus 1, I'll square that. This sign could be plus or minus, and a lot of people do 4x squared plus 1. Now let me tell you what's the flaw behind this. And to show you the flaw behind this, let's go back to doing algebra tiles. Let's clear this one. Reset. So once again, it's 2x. So 2x minus 1. Okay, I'm going to pull up another one over here. Wee wee. Okay. So 2x minus 1 is my length. Let's rotate over here. We'll do 2x, oops, 2x minus 1 as the width. Okay. And now let's see what we get. Remember, I'm trying to find the area. That's what I'm doing with expanding. This is my length, this is my width. Let's find the area. 1x squared, 2x squared, 3x squared, 4x squared. So a lot of you do this, right? The 2x all squared gives you 4x squared. That's fine. Then what happens is you'll do the negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1, and you get that. So what are we missing? How about this part here? What about over here? And that's what people always forget. So I hope with this visualization you'll see that you need these extra pieces. Positive x times negative 1 is negative x. And I do it twice. So I have to put 2 in. Okay, to fill up this part down here, same idea. Negative 1 times x is negative x. And there's another one. So what you're missing here is the negative 4x. So back to your notes now, to do this properly. What happens is, my feelings are if you were to rewrite this as two brackets, people do not make the mistake. But if people just try not to do this extra step, they get confused and wrong. So once again, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then here's the part that people miss out. 2x times negative 1 is minus 2x. Negative 1 times 2x is also another 2x. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Once again, this is the part people forget. Don't be one of those people. And here's your final answer. Now, this is expanding, which is a review. I show that to you because today we're going to learn the process of factoring these types of trinomials. And we learned lastly that factoring and expanding are really just inverse processes. So, here we started with the brackets, then you got the nice trinomial. Now, what we're trying to do is take that trinomial. Oops, I press something. We're going to take that trinomial, and we want to now rewrite it in bracket form. So, now the idea is to take this and write it in bracket form. Or also, the idea is to take these pieces here, and I'm going to ask you to make a rectangle. And because these pieces represent the area, I want you to afterwards find the length and the width. And the length and the width are the two things in the bracket. Okay? So let's see if we can continue this with algebra tiles. I'll show you how to do it with algebra tiles first, and then hopefully with the visual understanding, we can then go ahead and do some algebraic manipulations. So let's go back to our algebra tile program. I'm going to reset this, and our goal right now is to just try and make a rectangle out of all these pieces, two x squareds, 7x's and 3, so let's pull them out. 2x squared, 7x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay? Pause the video now if you want to try on your own. If not, we'll continue. Okay, so let's see how we can make them into a rectangle. So I lined up my two x squares. They always have to go together, one way or the other. Either this or like this. It's up to you. I'll just put it like this. And then these pieces have to line up two along the edges. So maybe I'll two, take two like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now here's my problem. 
these three little pieces always go in this bottom right hand corner like that or like this so I've got problems because that doesn't look like a rectangle what can I do? you may be thinking well hey how about take this and rotate it and stick it over here that's a great idea because now I can just put these here and there you go we've got our rectangle and the question that I'm asking you to do is to factor so all I really want you to look at is the length and the width how would I describe the length? This would be x and x and a 1, so that's 2x plus 1. And over here, this would be an x, and the length here is 1, 2, 3, so that would be x plus 3. Okay, now draw this in your notes, please. There's your 2x squared. There's my 6x. And then I've got one over here. And then I've got my one, two, three. Solid. And once again, you're asked to find the length and the width. So I'll call this one the length. I'll call this one over here the width. And the length here seems to be just an x and another x plus one. That'll be two x plus one. And the length on this side, or the width here, sorry, is x. And then you've got 1, 2, 3. So that'd be x plus 3. So I guess what you have here now is that you've now factored the trinomial 2x plus, sorry, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 into the length of 2x plus 1 and also x plus 3. Let's try the next one now. Okay, so 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. So once again, I will, oops, I want to go to here. Let's reset. It's 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. 2x squared, 7x, minus 4. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's start. How can you take these pieces and arrange it into a rectangle? So you will be thinking, okay, let's line these up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's no good. I've got problems. Oh wait, you say, let's take this and rotate it over here. Oh, that looks pretty good. Oh, wait a minute, I still got problems. Hmm, what can I do? Well, let me introduce to you the idea of a zero pair. If I were to take a one that's positive and a one that's negative, and I've looked at them together, positive one minus one, what is that equal to? If I put them together, well, that's just zero. I can add 0 to this because it doesn't really change the value of it. And that may help me actually create a rectangle. Well, these pieces probably don't. I don't need those pieces. It looks like what I'm missing are these rods. So I, my suggestion to you is maybe let's add in a 0 pair of these rods, or the positive x and the negative x. Now, how is this going to help me? Can I put these like this? The answer is no, because they have to be the same color when like that. So maybe that's not a good idea. Oh, but wait, what if I were to take this piece, rotate it, stick it down here, and take this piece, rotate it, and stick it up there? Now things seem to match up, and you've also created a rectangle. Let's draw this out now, okay? So 2x squared. We'll put them always in the top left corner. 7x is 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, and then we had minus 4, which we stuck 1, 2, 3, 4. 
And you see what we were missing? We had to kind of put in something. We added in what we call a zero pair. And the zero pair that we added in was a rod along with a, oops, I should not do that. A rod that was solid along with a rod that was negative. Whoa, what happened there? Undo. Okay, and then of course the solid one became here, and I'll highlight it so we can see that those are the zero pairs. And the uh, negative one was put up there. And now you can once again go ahead and figure out what the length and the width are going to be. In this case here, I've got the two x's along with the negative one. So that'd be two x minus one. And on this axis, I have the width, got a solid x there, and then solid, 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 so that would be x plus 4. Therefore, 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals to the length of 2x minus 1 and x plus 4. And that's what this stuff is. Okay, we'll turn the page, got one more here. Uh, I'll let you try that one on your own if you wish, because it's the same idea. Uh, so I'm going to stop the recording now, and I will write down the answer, and afterwards they will appear. Okay? Be back. So notice for this one, I've got to this stage, and I think I'm missing something. So once again, I'm going to have to add in some sort of zero pairs. And in this case, I think I once again need two zero pairs. So one that's solid, one that's not solid, so the not solid one goes there, and the solid one goes down here, and things look good again, because now I can figure out my length, there's a solid x, and one, two, three, four, so that's x minus four, a solid x, solid x, solid x, solid one, that'll be my width of three x plus one, and then once again, I can just rewrite this out, Notice it's the length of x minus 4 times the width 3x plus 1. And by the way, you can always double check your answers too by going ahead and expanding. If I were to expand, you get 3x squared plus x minus 12x minus 4. And you bet that's correct because it simplifies to what I started with. Okay? Now, we don't always want to use algebra tiles, that's just going to take too long, and drawing these pictures sometimes is quite tedious. But the idea of the pictures is to give you a rep visual representation of what's going on, and I hope you can keep in mind this idea of area and finding the length and the width. So, what I'd like you to do now is let's take a look at how we can actually factor some of these using algebraic means. Now, I'll actually show you three different ways, okay? I have my preference as to which way I like, but I'm going to show you three different ones for you to try. Okay? At the end of this, I hope you can decide which one you like better. And if you're unclear about the different ways, go back and replay this video. And then there will be some exercises at the end that I'd like you to try. Okay? So we're going to do the same question three ways. And the same question is this. Let's factor 3x squared minus x minus 10. Of course, you can do this using algebra tiles, but let's see if we can figure out some algebraic ways. Okay? Option one is what we call logical reasoning, or more often, the guess and check. So the idea here is that a trinomial has factors of this form, the two brackets, where you have ax plus b and cx plus d. So a, b, c, d are numbers. So here's what I like to do. I say to myself, what two monomials multiply to get 3x squared? So I look at that first term, 3x squared. What times what gives you 3x squared? And you might be thinking, hmm, 3x and x. Good. Now, what two numbers multiply to negative 10? You'll be thinking, oh, 1 and 10. I'll say, wait a minute, one of them has to be negative. And you're like, okay, I'll try negative 1. So the key thing here is I want you to multiply them diagonally to see if the sum is the same as the middle term. So if I took 3x times 10, that's 30x. And if I took x times negative 1, that's minus x. That equals a 29x. Is that the same as the middle term, which is negative x? Well, I think not. So what that means is, I screwed up. Let's figure out a different combination. So let's try another one then. I'll cross that out. Let's try 3x and x, and what else multiplies to 10? 
How about 5 and 2, you might be saying. Okay, well let's make this negative and that positive. We'll practice. Once again, we will do the crossing. So 3x times 5 is negative 15x. 2 times x is 2x. Add them together, that's negative 13x. Still no good. But wait, you might be thinking, hey, what if I were to change the order? Let's make this 5 and let's make this negative 2. Let's see what happens now. Okay, I'll say. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. x times 5 is positive 5. Add them together, yeah, that equals to negative x, which is the middle term. I like that combination. So therefore, your answer in this case would be, you write them like this horizontally, 3x plus 5, and then also x minus 2. And there's your length and the width, so there's your two brackets, there's your answer. You can always once again check by expanding, so I'm going to ask you to check this by expanding. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. 5 times x is 5x. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Simplify. Yep, looks good to me. Okay. So there is some sort of element of guess here, and you know, that's sometimes easy, sometimes hard. So that's what we call option one logical reasoning, or guess and check. Let's move on to option number two. Now two and three actually share parts of it together, but then they split up and do something different at the end. Now this method is similar to what we did earlier in section 3.5 when you dealt with questions that just had the x squared by itself, like this. Remember how you did these ones? Uh, let me change that sign. Remember how we did this from last section? Find two numbers and multiply to negative 4. Those same two numbers add to 3. Help me out. What are they? How about 4 and negative 1? And then you get this. X minus 4. Or X plus 4. X minus 1. Remember that stuff? If not, go back and check my previous video. Similar idea here. Okay, so when you're factoring this thing, or this trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, remember a, b, c are just numbers, you need to find, first of all, two numbers with a sum of the b, so sum to the middle coefficient, and the product is equal to a times c. Okay, now, once again, our question here, and I'll write this again, the question was factor 3x squared, I believe it was minus x, let's double check, yes, minus x minus 10. Okay, so it says a sum of b, meaning the sum has to be equal to negative 1, and the product must be equal to, not just C this time, it's A times C, which is negative 30. So I'm going to ask you over here to make a chart. Now you don't need to make a chart. If you can figure out the combination, that's great. But if you can't, then we can start doing something like this. Let's list some of the factors of 30. Well, the combination, of course, is 1 and 30. How about 2 and negative 15? 3 and negative 10? Uh, how about 5 and negative 6? And we can switch them around, I think, I guess. There's also negative 6 and 5. Oh, wait a minute, the same thing. Sorry. Positive 6 and negative 5. There's 10 and negative 3. There's 15 and negative 2. And 30, negative 1. Well, we can now find the sum of each of these. 1 and negative 30 is just negative 29. That's negative 13. And that's negative 7, negative 1. Oh, wait a minute. We found the one we're looking for. Let's just stop right here. Okay? So, in both of these two methods, option 2 and option 3, this part is the same. Okay? Here's where it's different. Decomposition says this. Once you have found the correct factors, split up this middle term into two parts using the factors. So what I'd like us to do is let's rewrite this as 3x squared, and instead of minus x, I'm going to replace it with 
plus 5x minus 6x. So notice I'm using the two factors here. Okay. Minus 10. Now, to continue, I'm going to ask you to factor by grouping. So what I want you to do right now is let's just focus in on the first two terms. Ignore the rest for now. What is the greatest common factor between the first two terms? X, you might say. Good. What's left over then? 3x plus 5. That's why we learn how to factor the greatest common factor in section 3.3. .3. Okay, now let's look at the last two terms. Okay. What's common between those last two terms? I heard you say negative 3. Okay. Oh, sorry, not negative 3. Negative 2, you said. Okay. What's left over? A 3x. And negative 10 over negative 2 is negative 5. Okay, now if you look at this, we've got one term, another term. Is there anything common between these two things? And if you said yes, there's a 3x plus 5. Good, let's factor that out. And what's left over is x minus 2, and voila, there is our answer. Exactly the same as our answer here when we did it by guessing and checking. Okay, here's the third way. Okay, and the third way is a little bit of a smoke and mirror thing, but if you really want to find out why it works, come talk to me and I'll show you the proof behind it. Okay? Option 3 is called choose method. The name is a little bit debatable, but the story behind it is that there was this really smart math kid in a math class, and then he brought this method up to the teacher. The teacher's like, wow, it works. And so the teacher named it after this gentleman. Of course, his last name was Chu. And then it became known as choose method. Okay? Now, note for choose method, you must have factored out all the greatest common factors before using this method. I guess this is a good rule for all of them too, but for this one, it's doubly important you do so. But the idea, once again, just like option two, the first part's the same, where you have to find two numbers with a sum of B and a product of AC. Okay, so once again, let's write out the question again. The question is factor of 3x squared minus x minus 10. And now we'll do that part, it's the same, two numbers that multiply to, okay, remember product of A and C, which is negative 30, the same two numbers have to add to negative 1, and we found the correct combination already, 5 and negative 6, so that part is the same. Now this one's probably most similar to what we did last section, so what we do now is we write the two brackets, I'm just going to use x right now, and I'll go x plus 5, x minus 6. Okay? And this is the extra part that you need to understand Okay, with choose method. You need to now take each number and divide each number by the a value. Okay, What's my a value in this case again? 3. So let's divide everything by 3. Okay? Your next step is to then simplify fractions if possible. Okay. So 5 over 3 I can't really simplify, so I guess I'll just leave that as is. But the 6 over 3 I can simplify, that's just minus 2. Okay. Now, we're almost close to the final answer. Look how similar this is. The only difference is that we have a fraction here. So then what we do, the last step now is for the remaining fractions. Okay, so with the fractions... I'm going to ask you to do something called bottoms up. Okay. So all I want you to do is take the denominator and stick it up and put it next to the x. And therefore you'll have your answer of 3x plus 5, x minus 2. And notice that this is the same as that. See? 3x plus 5, x minus 2. Okay, this one is a little bit of smoke and mirrors, but once again, if you want the proof, I'll show you. Uh, it works fine. It is mathematically sound. This method seems very similar to the previous one, so I know many students like this more than others. Okay, so right now it's your turn to really decide what you want to do. Okay, going forward, do you like 
Option one, guess and check. Do you like option two, decomposition? Or do you like option three, choose method? Okay, take some time to think about it right now, and I'll get back to you. Have you decided yet? Okay, so the rest of this part is really looking at the examples and just trying them out. So using whichever method you wish, I'd like you to try the questions on the following page. I'm not going to do them for you because there's different methods. But what I'll do is I'll actually show you the answers with one of the methods. And most of you, I think, decided to use choose method. So I'll do that for all of them, and I'll flash up the answers. Okay, so I'll flash them up. You can take a look. You can copy it down. But I'd like you to try to do these on your own. Okay? And with this section here, practice really does make perfect. So if you've got some time, go ahead and find some questions and do, do, do. I know when I was in high school, I did over a 100 of them before I really got this down right. Okay? Have fun. Here's the answers to 2A, 2B. You can pause the video to take a look and copy this down. Yeah. Here's the answer to C and D. Now notice for D, I'd like you to understand, hey, these values, I need to factor out the GCF first. Take out always the GCF first. Then here's E and F. Once again, GCFs for these ones, so make sure you take them out first, and then factor what's remaining. 